The Mamas and the Papas were a seminal and talented rock and pop group from the 1960s who paved the way for many groups after them. Their locked-in harmonies and catchy hooks captured a sound that has come to define the West Coast and is still popular today. If you turn on any movie set in the 1960s, odds are good you're going to hear one of their many hits like Monday Monday and California Dreaming in the soundtrack. But like so many successful bands, they weren't without their share of tumult behind the scenes. For the Mamas and the Papas, it was due to romances and affairs as well as unrequited love within the band. So join us as Facts First presents The Mamas and the Papas Were Torn Apart by Illicit Affairs. Michelle and John Phillips Though the Mamas and the Papas skyrocketed to stardom with their unique and lush pop sound, the inner workings of the band eventually tore them apart. But their beefs weren't musical in nature. The band performed with harmonies that audiences had never heard before, and they were in fact one of the first successful groups to combine male and female vocal performances. And yet, despite how locked in they were musically, they were completely out of sorts when it came to the interpersonal workings of the band. Michelle Phillips, one of the founding members, characterized the band's journey from 1965 to 68 as two and a half years of total melodrama. And she played a huge role in that melodrama. She first met fellow bandmate John Phillips when she was a teenager, primarily earning money as a model. John Phillips was married at the time, but the two fell in love, and John decided to leave his wife and marry Michelle. He had a trio at the time called The New Journeyman, and he also invited her to join the band. All seemed well between the two until the Mamas and the Papas started. While the band was in the midst of their extreme and sudden success, Michelle realized she had feelings for another bandmate, Denny Doherty. To her delight, Denny shared the same feelings. Michelle felt somewhat unencumbered by the bonds and rules of marriage and considered her relationship with John to be an open one. Though it appears she wasn't eager to let John know about her feelings for Doherty. She later claimed that even in rehearsals, when the group would be sitting around a table discussing which harmonies each of them was going to sing, she and Doherty would be playing footsie underneath. Michelle claimed that Cass Elliot and John were both totally unaware of what was going on. Eventually, however, the affair was unearthed, and it wreaked havoc on the morale and cohesion of the band. Phillips' Reaction John Phillips didn't exactly have a leg to stand on when it came to being angry about Michelle's affair with Doherty. This is because he was allegedly having a lot of dalliances on the side as well. And yet, he was furious when he found out that Michelle and Doherty were romantically involved. And while he resented Michelle for it, he seemed to be not quite as upset at the other half of the affair, Denny Doherty. Or at least he was able to put his feelings aside and co-write a song with Doherty called I Saw Her Again, which was not only about the affair, but became a hit. So at the very least, Phillips was able to channel his anger into a spark of creativity that helped the band. But things got much worse when he found out about Michelle's relationship with Gene Clark, who was a member of another important band, The Birds. That reportedly sent John into a tizzy, and he promptly kicked Michelle out of the band. This happened while the group was in the middle of recording The Mamas and the Papas, their second album. While switching personnel in the middle of an album recording isn't often a good idea, John was undeterred. He replaced Michelle with another singer, but the move backfired. Michelle used all of her clout with the record label, the other bandmates, and even fans to convince John to reverse his decision. And those moves worked. She was admitted back into the band to finish the album. Though it is interesting to note that there isn't a clear public record of which tracks were sung by Michelle and which were sung by the woman who briefly replaced her. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Cass Elliot and Denny Doherty There was another love story within the group that was of a different style yet ultimately created a wedge in the band. That was the unrequited love that Cass Elliot had for Denny Doherty. During the band's first album and the tour that followed, Cass developed strong feelings for Doherty. Sadly, Doherty wasn't interested in her romantically. This left Cass with feelings of rejection and sadness. These feelings were further intensified after it came out Doherty was having an affair with Michelle. Cass took this very personally. And even though she and Doherty weren't in a relationship, and it was unlikely they ever would be, Cass still felt like her friend and bandmate had betrayed her. Apparently, she confronted Michelle, pointing out that the former model and current rock star could basically have any man she wanted. Cass said, quote, I don't get it. You could have any man you want. Why would you take mine? Contentious recording sessions and the band's breakup. 
Sadly, the unrequited love between Cass Elliot and Denny Doherty, as well as the affair between Denny and Michelle Phillips, were too much for the band to take. This caused the recordings of their third and fourth albums to be troubled from the get-go. They tried to get past their differences in the name of getting great music recorded, and one of the big methods they used was drinking and drug use. They reportedly would wake up every morning during the recording sessions and get intensely drunk. Then they'd bring more booze and pot into the studio and partake all day as they created their albums. Michelle Phillips later pointed out that while the band did experiment heavily with LSD, they never used it in the studio. Things did get slightly better for John and Michelle, at least for a period. They got back together, and one of the first things they did was to help organize the Monterey International Pop Festival in 1967. The festival was a huge success and not only featured their band, but also acts like Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix. However, it was reportedly clear, even at that performance, that the band was starting to unravel. John and Michelle did manage to stay together long enough to have a child in those years, China, but they ended up divorcing in 1970. But the tension in the band, particularly between them, made it so that recording their third album, Deliver, and their fourth album, The Papas and the Mamas, was exceedingly difficult. Cass Elliot also confessed to a desire to branch out from the group around this time. She'd been getting offers for television and film and was interested in a solo career as well. As soon as the band disassembled, she started her solo career, recording a hit single, Dream a Little Dream of Me, in her first year. But before that, she slogged it out as best she could with the band until they fully broke up in 1969. The End of the Band and Their Deaths Though the group broke up in 69, it wasn't technically the end of their run. They had a brief attempt at getting back together in 1971. They recorded an album called People Like Us, but unfortunately, the spark and chemistry in the group was far gone. The album ended up being a failure. After that, the band was fully done. But even if they'd been trying to stay together, they likely would have ended by 1974 because that's when Cass Elliot tragically died. Her career had been going quite well until that point, and she was making TV and film appearances as well as selling records as a solo artist. Sadly, she died of a heart attack, potentially caused by her extreme diet regime. John Phillips died in 2001, though his later years were filled with drugs and alcohol. This included a stint in rehab in 1980 and a liver transplant in 1992. After his death, he was accused of rape and incest by his daughter Mackenzie. Doherty was a problem drinker for years, though did find a way to curtail that habit before dying in 2007. And Michelle Phillips is the remaining member of the band still alive today. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think the Mamas and the Papas would have lasted more years if it wasn't for the romances and unrequited love? What's your favorite song of theirs? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts Verse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.